Uh, let's see, it's three after, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, AI is the only one I really want to talk about with Logo, so Brian will look into that one. <clears throat> so let's jump right into the extension stuff. So um, hold on a second, let me open this up. So Sarah, not Sarah, sorry, uh, Rachel, pasted a comment in there last evening. Let me see if I can find it. Doo -doo -doo. Where is it? Right here. Um, and hopefully everybody had a chance to look at this comments. Uh, actually, just as a quick refresher, so at the end of last week's call, um, we were going to be taking we were going to be taking a vote, um, but then Kathy had some last minute changes she'd like to make to the PR, so she, and we got those in. So hopefully that's behind us. Uh, so the plan was to actually have a vote first thing on the call today, right now. Um, however, with Rachel's comment, I'm pretty much interpreting her comment as a request to delay the vote so that they can prepare some material to explain some of their concerns um, and do those uh, and, and do that presentation to us on next week's phone call. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I interpreting that correctly, Rachel? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so my question for the working group is, um, is there any objection to deferring the votes until after uh, Rachel, or until we have the, the further discussions next week when uh, Rachel can do her presentation or sure. Google can do that presentation? Well, Clemens rebuted Rachel's comments, so maybe Clemens can comment on that. So I'm happy. I'm happy to uh, um, have us have that discussion, but then really finally uh, next week. Um, I would I would prefer to really focus on Doug's uh, um, PR, so so this one, and and what the extensibility extensibility model is. Um, it would be great. Then um, I have a. I have a POC that I um, wrote this week um, that actually shows that you can go in and seamlessly flow um, a cloud event through three formats while retaining top level, top level extensibility for JSON and uh, XML, as schema less languages, and then use an extension bag for um, uh, Thrift and Protobuf uh, without loss of fidelity. Um, so, and, and I strongly believe that uh, what Rachel is raising is really a tooling issue. Um, and um, what I would like to see then, if Google wants to present next week, is um, a proper proposal for a protobuf um, wire uh, event format. And if that's not there, then I'm just considering that a, a private implementation issue of Google with a proprietary format that they're choosing to use event, uh, cloud events for. And then that's a question of, what, of why that ought to be even a concern for the group. So, um, but, but, even, but even with that, um, I think um, there is, with the prototype that I have, and I wrote that in C Sharp, um, just because that was uh, kind of the closest thing for me in the, last, the, the least time, um, but that should be something that um, most people can go and follow that basically proves that you can go and do um, not only that flow, but also you can actually do extensibility in the sense of um, you know, promote, promoting um, properties um, out of a 1.0, assume 1.0 standard to a 1.1 standard, and then also have uh, kind of flexibility and, pr uh, and operability um, in that model. So I would, I would ask people to go and review that, and I'm happy to go and, and hear Google's arguments next week, and uh, then end that call next week with a vote. Right. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of things that were mentioned in there. One is I'm not. I don't think I'm hearing any, any objections yet to deferring the vote until next week and have the discussion. Uh, obviously, I'll ask again because only two people got to speak there. But two, um, there was some requests there made as part of Google's sort of presentation to the group to, to address some of what Clemens mentioned there. Um, the other thing is, Clemens, you have mentioned your POC. Um, I, I, I prefer not to necessarily take up time on this call to talk about your POC. Would it be okay if we talked about your POC on next week's call as well? Um, yeah, if people if people take a look at it, I'm happy to do a brief walkthrough through it um, and constrain it to five minutes next next week. Okay, that'd be great. I, I assume Rachel that uh, um, uh, giving up five minutes of the time from next week's call is okay awesome. with you. Yeah, of course. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, so um, let me then circle back around. Are there any objections then to deferring the vote until um, next week's call after we've had a couple of uh, more discussions about this, mainly the on Google to, to present their concerns. Um, I'd just like to establish that we don't delay it again. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of orthogonal or duplicitous arguments that we continue to argue through. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to come again next week 
and say, okay, we're gonna delay till the week after. Okay, sounds fair. Any other comments on that? Just, just to be clear, who's, who's being duplicitous? Who's what? Who's being duplicitous? No, I just think we've had the argument of um, particular implementation several times now. Um, we had it a couple weeks ago. We had some last week. So either we need to settle that or we need to decide we're not going to settle it and we're going to vote anyway. Okay, so anybody else have a comment on that? I'm not hearing any objection. Yeah, just I mean, I just thought we were just working through the quest, open questions. Yeah, I mean, we are. That's why I, I think it's, it's fair to ask the group if, they want it, if they're okay with, with continuing the discussion. So, okay, I'm, I'm not hearing any, I'm sorry, someone's saying something there, Eric? Just a comment on the comment, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and after uh, presentations of, with content that, you know, uh, who knows what the uh, results would be. Uh, I'm not, I, I think leaving it open for one week after that uh, seems re within reason. That's fair. It feels absolutely certain. Okay, so I think what I'm hearing is potentially um, use up as much time as necessary on Check next it. week's phone call to discuss uh, final concerns about this, then give people one more week to ponder the situation and then vote first thing on the following call. Is or this fair? could be a good opportunity to try an offline vote that wouldn't take up our time. That's fine too. I, I, I don't expect a vote to be more than three minutes because it's not gonna be, a, uh, I'm not gonna allow people to, to elaborate beyond yes, no, or abstain, to be honest. At that point, we've already talked it through. But I that, like the idea that offline voting also records, you know, a yes, no, abstain comment, even if the comment can't cause a conversation. Um, it's good to actually let people stand by their decisions and explain themselves. Okay, we can, we can, figure, out the, we can figure out the exact details of the, how the vote happens next week. Um, but anyway, the, the point here is one more week for discussion. I mean, sorry, next week's call will be discussions and then a vote will happen. Sound fair? Yes. Okay. No, no objection to that plan? All right, so that is the plan going forward. Thank you guys very much. All right, next on the agenda. Um, it was brought up, I can't remember, I apologize, I can't remember who mentioned it, but someone mentioned in Slack uh, about the possibility of a face-to-face -face meeting at the OSS Summit in Vancouver at the end of the month. So I said I'd bring it up. Um, I'm just curious, do people want to have a face-to-face? -face? Are enough people gonna be there to warrant a face-to-face? Who's going to be there? Yeah, Doug, that was uh, Miss Jesse. Um, I think I'm the one who brought it up, or one of the people brought it up. I will be there. Um, I was just curious if other people are going to be there. Yeah, I know I will be there, so I'm okay with a face to face. And and I, I believe uh, Chris Anacek did say we can get a room uh, at the conference center if we wanted one. I, I won't be there, and it's too short short notice for me. Okay. Uh, I see in the chat uh, two other people, Chris and Austin, will be there. How many other people are going to be there? Because if it's less than, say, five or eight or something like that, I'm not sure it's worth it, at least to make it a formal meeting, because I think that's not yeah. necessarily quorum. We could just meet for a meal or something. <laughs> <laughs> Food is good too, yes. Okay, so tell you what, I'm not hearing a whole bunch of people speaking up, but um, let me do this. What if I start a doodle poll? and make it last not too long because people would need to make plans if we do set it up. So maybe a doodle poll that ends end of day tomorrow. And if we can get a significant number of people saying yes, then we'll see if we can set something up. But if we don't get um, you know, somewhere between like eight or more, then uh, I'm not sure it's worth it. Does that sound fair? Sounds good. Yeah, maybe people can just chime in in the notes if they know they're gonna be there. Yep. We can start to. We should, we should um, just as a general note, I think uh, having at least uh, four weeks uh, uh, lead time for a face-to-face -face is, uh, is required because yeah. I, uh, people me, are just busy. Yeah, yeah, and maybe, I mean, I think we can have a face-to-face. -face, it's just a gathering. It's a community gathering, not a true. Um, official meeting. That, right? that, is, yep, that is definitely true. Yes, yeah, so we don't have quorum. We could still meet if we yeah, chose to, but, it, right. but it's not a... Uh, for all working group session. And you're right, Clemens, I'll double check. I think in our charter, it actually may require a certain number of weeks. Um, 
and I'll go back and double check. And if it's within, I'm sorry, if it's too soon per the charter, then I'll drop the entire idea, but I'll, I'll double check on that. Okay, great. Yep. All right, um, community time. Are there any community um, questions people want to bring up or topics you want to mention? This is usually for the time for people who don't usually join the call, but are more from the community itself to bring up particular issues they'd like to discuss. All right, not hearing any, we'll move forward then. Um, Austin, I'm assuming you don't have anything to update on the SDK. I do see online now though. Um, since you are here though, let me ask you a question. Do you have any update on the, your AI relative to the logo? It's done. I just need to submit the artwork. Um, I could do that today. Should I upload this to the Cloud Events spec repo or should we make a separate repo for our work? Uh, I don't see any reason why it would need to be a separate repo. Do you, can you think of a reason? Um, when you have image files and artwork, it's going to increase the file size of the repo. So I'm not sure if that's a concern. Are we, are we talking gigabytes? No. No, it shouldn't be too bad. I think a few megabytes. Can we use LFS? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to use uh, sketch files. I just recently started using Get Get LFS for all my image files for repos. That was fairly easy. That's our big option here. Uh, okay. okay. We should need that if we have one image, though. Yeah these these will be these will be fairly small as long as there there are not a lot of changes. Um, should be fine. So I will submit. Where should I put these in the repo, Doug? Um. Honestly, I don't remember. Do we have an images directory or something like that? Or um, I don't think we do actually. So just create a directory for it and call it whatever you think is appropriate. I I don't really think it matters much. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, sir. And then so back to the SDK work group. Anything to mention there? Since I don't think you've had any meetings. Uh, we have not had any meetings since the uh, the last one we had a few weeks ago. All right. Okay. In that case, moving forward, Kathy, I believe you had one meeting. Um, uh, since you last gave an update, is there anything you'd like to update the group on? Uh, so for the function workflow document, is that right? Yes, correct. Oh, okay, so um, we have had um, multiple meetings um, you know, working on this um, document. Um, the subgroup has been working on this document and updating it, uh, adding, uh, addressing the comments. And then we wrapped up in the, um, last week's meeting. And so now we would like to bring this uh, to the uh, to the um, to this work group to discuss where we should put this um, um, document. Should we put it into a separate repo or should we put it put it in the cloud events repo? Right. So I was uh, my personal view was to create a separate repo for for this because it's not part of the uh, cloud events work, obviously. Um, but it does, I, in my opinion, it warrants its own little its own little repo because it's also not part of the serverless stuff. It's sort of a new side project. Um, what does the people in the working group think? Is it a brand new repo to to host this? Is that okay with everybody? So, I, I was. This is part of serverless, but it's not. I agree with you. It's not. It's not a really uh, you know um, a section of cloud events. I think it's parallel to cloud events. Um, but it's a serverless um, function workflow. So I think probably it's, I agree it's a separate repo is better. Yeah, I'm trying to think. We, the serverless working group has its own repo under CNCF. So we can't, keep, we can't create a repo under our, our repo, under the working group serverless repo. I think we'd have to create a new repo under CNCF. I think that's the only org we have access to at this point, right? Well, is this a, so like if, if this is a proposal of the serverless working group, right, then maybe it should be under the proposals for um, serverless, right? We, we, yeah, definitely, we definitely could do that. Uh, I guess it depends on how independent of a, of a work stream we view this, right? Because at one point we decided cloud events was uh, independent enough that we sort of 
branch it off from serverless? Do we feel like this is too premature to take that, that step? Well, I, I think the process is like so cloud events is a project of the CNCF, right? It's not. Well, it is now. Yes. It's working group now, right? Yeah, yeah. And before that, it was just part of the serverless working group and all the artifacts were in the serverless working group repo. So maybe the workflow, uh, we're calling it a working group, but like the workflow uh, working group is a sub working group of the serverless working group and artifacts should go there until such a time that the serverless working group thinks it should be a project and potentially promotes it or whatever is going to, or documents it or whatever's the outcome going to be. Okay. Like, so, you know, I don't like, I, I haven't been involved in it, so I don't know what exactly the proposal is, but it does seem like, you know, it's premature to, and like maybe tell the TOC like that there's something going on or, or set a time or something. But I think there, sh there should be a, it, it, like we need a um, kind of a, like Kathy's saying, like we need to figure out like, what is this thing? So um, it's, you know, maybe a serverless working group work stream. Okay, well basically what I'm hearing um, is, uh, I'm hearing most people seem to be thinking, just upload it into the serverless working group for right now, not create a separate repo for it. Does that sound like what people were thinking? Okay, not hearing any objection. Kathy, is that okay with you? Yeah, I agree because this is what the service work group decide to to do um, another uh, work stream, right? So I think it should be yeah part okay. of this. Okay. So um, Kathy, can you create the PR against the serverless uh, repo to upload the or the file and just create a new directory for it someplace? Okay. Yeah, I can okay. do that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, moving forward then. We don't have any issues in terms of maintenance that I want. That I was hoping we'd get to close. So let's jump right into PRs. All right, hopefully this one is an easy one. I did give you guys a warning that I considered it to be such. So Thomas, would you like to talk to this sampling extension PR that we opened? Yeah, this is, um, once again, it was a vendor's uh, change or an adapted change from what Honeycomb had proposed long ago. Um, they want to have an extension where a system may send a subset in order to do observability without overloading a system with too much data. Um, and so uh, this is the data layer that the event itself would include a, an extension for the uh, sampling rate, which basically tells you how many events this supposedly represents, so to speak. Um, so maybe in a registration, you'd have a similar feature where you'd say, okay, the this subscription to events only wants one in 30, and then the event itself would say, by the way, this was sampled at a rate of 30. Yep. Now you have a, a couple other things in here. Uh, did you want to talk to those? Sure, uh, the spec had never supported the idea of an integer before, um, so I had to add it into the, um, the info set. Uh, it seems like 32 integer solves our needs for now, so I'm not uh, inventing a whole bunch of types of integers. Uh, if we needed some more clarity in the future, we might invent u integer or u int 64. So. Okay. And then up here, I think this was mainly just editorial changes. This is in extensions.md, right? Oh, uh, also, this is the first uh, extension that was itself a scaler. And since extensions.md has some uh, basically stylistic notes on how to write a extension in the extensions folder, so they all look the same in our ease review. And so I added some more uh, notes about uh, like how a scalar could be documented. Okay. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments on this one? Nothing? I think it's great for our first for for our first example of a of of an extend, extension and it's uh, it's good use. Yeah. Um, I I think having for the formal language of the integer type, we could be a little um, bit more, like a, a thirty to bit whole number. We could go and formulate this a little bit more, kind of um, um, uh, like it's it, it needs to be clear that it's signed or unsigned. 
um, that's not there. I would probably, rather than saying 32 bit, I would probably go and define what the value space is. Um, but that's some, something we can go and fix later. Like I wouldn't hold the, the PR on that. Okay, sounds good. All right, any other comments? Why, why don't we just go for 64 bit off the bat? I mean, it seems to be the standard these days. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, 64-bit is not JSON safe. You cannot represent a 64-bit number in JSON because JSON takes a lot of, well, not in all languages. Um, so for example, JavaScript can't handle 64-bit integers, so it, there's actually a lot of controversy around those numbers. Um, some systems will say that 64-bit numbers uh, are actually 50-something, 50 52-bit numbers for the Mentessa. Uh, some will say that they should always be strings, that they can't be lossy on any language. There's just a lot of uh, sharp edges when you include JSON and 64-bit. Okay. Sounds like a good starting point then. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right. Let me ask the question then. Is there any objection to adopting this PR? Excellent. Not hearing any. Thank you guys very much. Cool. It's been actually a couple of weeks since we've approved a PR. All right, Clemens, you are up with qualifying protocols and encodings. Did yeah, so there has been, obviously, there has been a lot of uh, uh, discussion while I was away. I took the, I took the change um, that was suggested, um, so that section. Uh, I made a, an amendment this morning, which I'm, um, if that's not palatable, I'm happy to back out that particular sentence. Um, Where was that? Uh, I added uh, that the, here. Yeah, exactly. So I added effectively the, 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 the sub sentence. Um, so the original, the original text that you all arrived at was practically would like to see at least one open source implementation uh, and at least a dozen independent vendors using it in their product services. And then I injected effectively that reference to uh, under the umbrella of a vendor neutral open source organization um, to basically match the, the protocol standardization body. So we'll want to make sure that we don't have, just, just because a vendor puts their, their own product out under their own, co under their own copy or copyright um, in open source and they have a bunch of customers, that doesn't necessarily entitle the, that doesn't necessarily entitle you to be you know part of the, part of, part of uh, or have an official spec, but you should really in the spirit have a open source product that has been produced or is developed on, on neutral ground, and then we'll go and um, and consider that um, here. All right. Any questions or comments on this? Uh, a non-blocking comment that could be done as a follow-up if people agree. Um, the the language on line 27 just always hit me as a little bit strong. Um, it, uh, I might have phrases thinking along the lines of the cloud is, the cloud event spec is not an advertising space for proprietary proposals. Um, I don't want to let good be the enemy or great be the enemy of good. Uh, if a company like if if Amazon wanted to support cloud events. It's totally okay that they, cloud events can be compatible with SNS or SQS. Uh, it's also totally okay that, that the working group doesn't want to be the place that hosts that documentation. Um, but I read this as like shame on Amazon for using SQS as a storage buffer, which is, is not really, I think, the intention here. SQS is using, SQS is using HTTP, and you can go and just map um, that onto their, onto their protocol. Is that, like, I don't see necessarily being, being like, like you can go and take a cloud event and map it into an HTTP message. And I would think that in the way how we're doing that mapping into the body of the, the message ought to be compatible with SQS, both on the receive and the send side. I haven't, I haven't validated that, but I think it would be. It might not, it will not be uh, compatible with the webhook spec that we have, but that's okay. Right. Like, I actually like it. Have, like, if there was some kind of follow up where, like, I think we have this for just general open source stuff that would be like, you know, and maybe this is maybe I can't, I, I'm not sure whether I'm confusing two places, but like, if there was, if this pointed to, we encourage vendors to support cloud events and list yourself here with a reference to your doc if you're supporting, you know, like, if you have a different transport for your proprietary thing. 
I'm sure somebody could come up with a more concise way to say that. The, the point that I think the point I'm trying to make here, and um, so uh, with a follow on PR, that would be, would be, um, a, might be the best way to go and wordsmith that particular part is um, that what I want to, what I want to express is that not, this should not be the place where you make your, um, you know, your proprietary protocol known to a broader audience. That's what I want to say. And, and really what we want to do, we don't want to, we don't want to contribute to the proliferation of more proprietary protocols um, with products which could go and snap to a standard protocol without, without any problem, but just choose to use a proprietary protocol because it's, it just happens to be more convenient for them or because they just want to, um, they don't want to standardize uh, because they want to go and lock customers into their, into their new protocol because we've seen all of that. So um, I would, th the goal that we have here overall is to promote interoperability and people showing up with, with new proprietary protocols doesn't help interoperability. So I, I don't want, and, um, and I hope we don't want us to be the place where we are trying to promote interoperability and at the same time also provide, uh, uh, um, uh, promote um, um, you know, proprietary product protocols. So I, I understand that that's a little bit, so I've been trying to, to condense that into that sentence and I'm happy to take alternative wordings of that um, if, uh, but I hope that people are, um, um, agreeing to the spirit of what I just said. Yeah, I think that like, I think, I think, I think I agree with you. Like we do, we, we want, we want, I agree we want to promote interoperability. And I think that that is the spirit of this paragraph. So um, I, 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 so I think that like I'd move forward with this paragraph and then like, you know, people can wordsmith it as follow-ups. Okay. And I think even Thomas started off by saying it was a non-blocking comment and he'd be happy to do a follow-on PR if people wanted. So we could, we could yeah. obviously do that. Um, any other comments on this one? I just have a question. What are the proprietary protocols that are being referred to? Um, for instance, Solar has, uh, was that Solar? One of, the, one of the brokers that we had a proposal for adding a protocol to has a completely proprietary protocol, um, Pulsar, that's what it is, has a completely proprietary protocol that only it uses. Um, and so here's the question of whether we should go and give a blessing to um, that nascent uh, product while the rest of the pops up uh, space is um, using, uh, it's basically convening on uh, you know, uh, one of two protocols. So that's an example of, of here's, a pro, here's a project which comes up with their own protocol, um, uh, obviously very early in the cycle um, that then um, is only used by that project. Um, also has you know, obvious things that a protocol, a more mature protocol uh, would have are missing like versioning, et cetera. Um, and then we had another, pro another proposal out of the open mess uh, from, from open messaging, which also doesn't kind of meet the bar in, in my view, in terms of participation um, of, uh, uh, and usage. And um, so there's, there's just a bunch of, so, so the question is, if we take 20 of these things, um, instead of kind of the, the protocols that the industry has mostly been, been uh, focusing on over the last, last 10 years, um, are we helping interoperability? And I don't think we are. So those are That's examples exactly from here um, that I find um, problematic for us to endorse. That's helpful, thanks. All right, any other comments or questions on this one? Okay, not hearing any, Tom, oh, not Thomas, uh, Clemens, I have a question for you. So you actually created a brand new doc for this. Um, so two things. One is, if nothing else, if we keep this brand new doc, we need to reference it from the README at some point. But also, would it be appropriate in your mind to move this into the primer, or do you think this needs to be a standalone doc? Um, I, I think in the, in the PR comment, I actually wrote that I don't think of this. Um, do, 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 do. No, I didn't say that explicitly. So uh, the way I think about this is this is a section that ought to go into the primer. Okay. 
Um, and um, I just didn't have a better place for it. And I think when we talked about this, uh, Doug, then, um, and I think it was, was also, we talked about this on the call. Um, I said, I'm going to go and write a PR. I'll write this up in the PR and it really is meant to go into the primer. So I don't, I, I think this should, like, we should take it and then move it. Okay. So what, what we can do though is assuming the working group adopts the, the, the PR, you and I can work offline to actually modify the PR to add it to the primer because no, no, the text of the PR won't change. It's just its location will be. Moved. Yeah, correct. Right. So let me ask the question. Um, is there any objection then to adopting the, the PR? So I have a question in, I think in our previous meeting, we said we are going to have bullets list of, you know, the criteria. I do not see, maybe I miss it. Yeah, right Does here. this have one? Yeah, look at the oh, line okay. 34. I think that's what, um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody would, uh, suggested that, yeah. I, mean, I think it may have been Ryan, I can't remember for sure. So you see it now, Kathy? Yeah, okay. I saw it here. Okay. okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Any objection then to adopting the PR? Okay. Is there any objection then to, in the process of merging the PR in, we move it into the primer? Just want to get that out of the way. I would object if it wasn't done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so hold on a minute. Do, do, do. Approved and move into primer. So I'll work with you, um, Clemens, offline to make that happen. Thank you. All right. Now, as Clemens alluded to, there are two different PRs out there for adding some transports um, or bindings. Um, my assumption was that people may not have actually had a whole lot of time to review those, especially in light of Clemens PR that we just adopted. Do people wish to discuss these two PRs today or do you want to defer that until potentially after next week's phone call since next week will be about extensions? It's up to you guys how you want to proceed here. Does everybody feel like they've reviewed these enough? Because they have been out there a while. So we, we can't technically talk about them if we want to. No comments. I, I so my my uh, opinion of the specifically of the open messaging one is um, open messaging like the 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 PR that I've seen and if it hasn't if it hasn't changed significantly in the uh, when was the last change made? It's been a while, I believe. Yeah, um, wasn't really. Yeah, that's right. Um, so give us some advice about it at the, at the so six days ago it was a comment. So I, th I think that PR as it stands, uh, it doesn't even define a transport binding and it doesn't define it. Uh, um, uh, like it doesn't, it doesn't create a, uh, an implementation guideline for how you realize uh, cloud events on either open messaging, um, uh, open messaging's native transport if there is one, um, and uh, open messaging's native encoding is there if there is one, but it it just I don't even quite really understand what it does. But it kind of alludes to that you can use uh, cloud events with open messaging, but it really doesn't it doesn't raise to the level of really being a spec. So that clearly needs extra work, and it really needs to um, refer to um, effectively. Um, what I know, what I, so I believe that the, the, the wire format here is whatever RocketMQ uses, um, because the, the effort here is based on, uh, apparently based on RocketMQ, so it would have to have, would have to be effectively binding to that protocol, and then we'll have to go and check that against the rules that we just adopted. But like, a, as it stands, the, after I've reviewed this, this is not a, this is not a, um, like, that's not even a spec. Yeah, my, my initial take on this was that given the, the, the bar that we just adopted in your other PR, Clemens, I wasn't sure if this met all the criteria of being widely adopted. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, if you look at open messaging, if you look at open messaging, the, the, uh, the effort, um, I only see three people contributing in an awful certain company. So even if it's, even if it's running under the CNCF, 
um, uh, there's there's some ex there's some external contributions that are being made by um, by folks into the benchmarking effort that's running in the open messaging group. Um, but but in terms of really the specifications, that's effectively all marching straight from whatever Rocket MQ does um, into uh, open messaging. And then Rocket MQ itself is an effort that's um, uh, also kind of fairly solitary um, by what it looks like, um, um, also by affected by a single firm. So even though it's been um, politically, um, it's been politically smartly done, I would say, to run these things under the under the umbrella of Apache and uh, and uh, um, CNCF. Um, it doesn't, for, for me personally, it doesn't meet the bar of um, being open source efforts and standardization efforts that really are community driven. Okay. This, this looks like, this looks like political <laughs> rubber stamping to me. <laughs> okay. Um, what do other people think? Have, have, do enough people, or I'm sorry, have enough people on the phone call looked at this enough to form an opinion? I'm not sure how to interpret the silence here. I'm inclined to interpret it as no and give you guys another week, but, I, but if, if someone wants to speak up, please do. I, I've looked at a couple of these transport bindings and I, I struggle to see the value in them apart from, I think like Clement said, political rubber stamping. I mean, I'm from Confluence, so obviously I have a Kafka interest, but I didn't want to come forward and say anything till I see how these transport bindings kind of progress and at the moment I'm kind of at a loss as to the value until cloud events and the extensions and everything gets mapped out a bit further. So I'm kind of just sitting back trying to observe how this is going to make sense at the moment with the transport bindings and especially with the, the latter stuff that Clements has just added in the previous PR. So, so Neil, does your comment apply to both of these PRs, the Pulsar yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, would anybody else on the call want to make a comment? So this is Ryan. Um, um, pretty much my impression was, given that we now have a more strict or, or clear definition of what meet the bar, we can look at that two lines of bullets that we just passed, the, the, the bullet points with the PR just we passed, mm -hmm. and we can just take a look and see if they meet that either standard or de facto standard. In my opinion, they don't seem to be that far. That's, okay. yeah. Yep, okay. So I'm not hearing anybody jumping up and saying you that they believe that both of these PRs meet the new bar that we just adopted. So what I'd like to do is give people um, at least another week to look at these two PRs just to make sure that I'm not missing something. But I'm getting the general sense that we're probably gonna choose to close both these PRs with no action um, but let's give people a week um, to review that and come back and see if they've identified some reason that they actually do meet the bars that we just adopted. Does that sound fair to people? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So hold on a sec. Um, um, All right, thank you guys very much. Any other comments on that uh, topic before we move on? All right, um, this PR, I thought might be relatively easy for us to tackle. I don't believe David is on the call though. So David added a JSON schema for our specification. Um, let's see, I guess to the JSON format doc, he added a reference to the JSON schema doc and they actually included the JSON schema here itself. So with that, do people have any comments or concerns about this? I did actually run this schema, um, JSON schema through a checker. It did pass okay. I gave it some sample JSON to make sure it did seem to catch all the required fields and stuff like that to, to make sure they were there. It seemed like it, it, it did work from my point of view. Anybody have any comments or questions on this one? Any concerns with adopting it or merging it? I think it's great. Might be something we could use in the SDK as well. Yep, definitely. All right. 
Any objection to adopting it? I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume that this thing, I, I just want to clarify, I think this thing will change, this schema as, as we change our spec? Correct. That my assumption is that as people uh, propose PRs to add or remove attributes to our specification, they, the PR should also include the updates to the JSON schema here or any other documentation that might reference that, that attribute. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that's my question. Yep. So one of the questions I have, um, and that's really a JSON schema question because I um, uh, have to admit that I haven't um, studied that in, in as much detail as I should. Um, whether, uh, yeah, so that's exactly that comment that you're just pointing to, um, whether JSON schema actually allows, if we, if we then um, adopt uh, 277 um, next week, if we were, um, whether JSON schema actually supports an open schema model where you can go and add stuff to the JSON and then does the JSON, like, can you tell the JSON schema validator to, to be okay with that? If it finds extra content that it doesn't, uh, no, or will it always fail? Like, how does that work? Is there anyone on the call who knows the answer to that question? Okay, I think that actually might be a really good thing to try to resolve before next week. Um, if yeah, anybody can somebody put a comment on the PR? It, or no, you already have comments. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he beat you to it. Um, yeah, so that might be a good thing for us to, to, to find out. Um, I'm, I'm sure every one of us knows a JSON schema person someplace in our company. So maybe um, people can go and try to find from their schema expert what they think. Okay. But that's definitely is something we should talk about at some point. Yeah, I, I, would, I would hope that there is a mechanism um, because if there wasn't one in XML, then there will be one in JSON, I guess. But um, because I'm sure that the schema people um, came, come from the same tribe, but um, uh, that's something we should go and verify. Yeah, I mean, plus I know people use JSON schema all the time, and I know people add extra stuff to JSON messages all the time, and I can't imagine it would bust it. So, but we need to, we need to, we need to go back. To do that. I did it a few months ago. I just can't remember all the details, um, but I definitely had arbitrary data. Um, I just validated some of it. Okay. So, but I guess, Clemens, your real question is how do you actually represent that in the schema as opposed yeah, to just... I, yeah, I just, want to, oh, I just want to know, not that we're taking this and then uh, find ourselves in, in, uh, um, in a box. Because JSON schema is, as things go, is not the only schema you can go in for, for, for JSON as well. So, right. as that is in that wild world of JavaScript. Right. And then to me, the question is, okay, do we need to actually add something here that says you may put extra stuff or is it, is the, is it the lack of something alone I mean, or, or, or nothing at all implies you can add extra stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it, so I'd like to, I'd like to just understand that from a, from someone who's been doing this, a particular a practitioner um, and ideally from um, who owns the PR. Yep. Okay. So we'll get, I get that answer out there. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll jump in real quick. This is Chris. Um, can can you repeat the exact question again? Because I've actually been working pretty closely with the maintainers of JSON schema. Oh, so the question was, um, if we um, so if we accept two seventy seven, which means we're then moving to effectively having an open schema. Um, how do you represent um, a how do you represent an open schema in 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 JSON schema? Meaning um, you are making it explicitly okay to add further elements. Okay. Um, yeah, I can, I'll reach out to them and point them to this issue too and see if they'll chime in. Okay, thank you. I mean, in XML, I, I would know the answer and Doug would know the answer and that's just adding the any element, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay. here is, and that shows our age. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in JSON, I don't know. That's newfangled stuff. <laughs> These whippersnappers, yes. Okay. There is a specific attribute that specifies whether the uh, whether there can be things other than what is in the uh, declared schema, or whether um, the uh, only what is in the declared schema is possible, and that that affects uh, the compatibility of changes to that schema and whether they could be breaking or not. I'm sorry, but I can't recall it off the top of my mind right now. Okay, so so a comment a comment under this PR would be very very appreciated. 
Right? However, I believe that this PR by itself as of right now is accurate according to the current version of our spec, correct? Actually, it's, it's, it's not, right? I, I just see that there's, a, there's still that extension bag. We think we are going to remove that, right? Well, we haven't removed it yet. But that's so. the current version of the spec. Right. Yeah. So until we accept another PR that removes the extension, I believe this is accurate according to the current version of the spec. So my question now is, is there any objection to adopting this PR? Because I think the outstanding question that people are going to investigate is relative not to this PR per se, but rather the other PR, 277, I think it was, Clemens was saying? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I think it affects that PR, not this one. Yeah, the question was just basically uh, whether we're boxing us in, uh, but what I just heard is um, that there is a mechanism like this, we just don't know what the name of the, the attribute is. Right. Um, so. If there is a mechanism like this, then I, see, don't, I don't see any reason not to take this. Right. All right. Is there any objection then to adopting this PR? All right, cool. Thank you very much. Um, all right, Christoph, I don't believe Christoph is on the call. However, he wanted to add some guidance on extensions. And this, I believe, applies regardless of whatever happens with our current extension discussion. That's why I thought it was safe to bring it up on today's call. So he wanted to add this little bit of text here to the primer. I'll leave you guys a chance to read it in case you haven't read it uh, up till now. It's very short. I agree with that. Okay. Are there any comments yeah. on this one? Any concerns? Any objection to adopting it? And keep in mind, it is just in the primer, so it's not a narrative, just providing some guidance. So last chance, any objections? Um, oh yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Okay. I don't okay. really understand what it means. Like, does this mean, does this imply that it's not for like, I wanna, start using this like does this mean that we are excluding experimental no i think all it's trying to say is don't start adding gigabytes of data to cloud events metadata because in certain modes like this http binary mode mapping so that to is, http header will be problematic okay so maybe it's the value of extensions attributes yeah i, I agree it, it, yeah, that does yeah, I think that was um, the main purpose behind it, but I think you also may need to worry about the number of headers as well is part of the issue. Unfortunately, um, he's not on the call to explain this, but he actually did a whole, where is it? He did a whole bunch of uh, uh, investigation here. Um, so I think that needs to be referenced because when, when I, and you know, like I'm sort of coming in having missed some of the calls, but um, it, it seems like this is this should be like if you're thinking at it of adding extensions attribute, maybe you shouldn't. Rather than the number of extensions attributes and volume of data required in a single cloud event should be small. Um, and I can write that down, but I think that that I don't know the intent wasn't clear to me. Yeah, no, I, I, it I, sounds I don't, like. It sounds like those are good additions. Uh, can, can you, I just said, can you make a comment to offer up some alternative wording? Because I think what you're suggesting sounds like a good change. Yeah, there's also um, like way, way back when this was the open events group, um, we had thought, like tried to work through what extensions might make sense and just kind of like usage guidance, the full stack. Um, and we came up with this idea of, um, it seems like in practice, uh, the data in a cloud event, it, it's easier for developers if we reuse existing types. Um, like literally like in, in client libraries and, you know, uh, API specs, that it'd be the, the, the event for service foo would include data type T of service foo. Um, but what happens is sometimes there's additional data that's only useful in the context of an event. So for example, in a FTP service, uh, it might include metadata about what, whether or not it just overwrote one file by uploading a new one. 
Um, and it wasn't clear whether the definition of what a file is should change and add additional properties that are only ever used in cloud events and muddy the normal like re request response APIs or whether that type of data should be put in extensions. Uh, right. And I don't. We also have the data section, right? So anything that's specific to the event that's not metadata, um, uh, that's kind of standardized can go into the, into the data. Anything that's specific to an event ought to go into data, no? So what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that there's a couple of these cases where it's a fuzzy concept where um, that is in some sense a metadata about the event. The, the data could be just like the class, you know, system.file, but system.file doesn't include a property that lets you describe what this file overwrote. It's not going to be a persisted feature. It's not, you can't get that property when you just say list files. Um, and so from uh, these eventful systems perspective, uh, it is a little bit muddy and I'm, I'm not giving guidance. I'm just raising a thought experiment that never concluded from long ago. Uh, it is a little bit muddy whether or not uh, they should edit all of their existing classes to include this field that will only ever be used in a, an eventful format. Whether they should have a different version where it's file event as opposed to just an event of file. Uh, or whether they should just put eventful metadata about that file in the extensions header. Uh, but, but do you need the, what do you do with that with, uh, in the, on the metadata? Why is that not, why is not something that is absolutely specific to one event, not just going into data? Because we, the question is what is the type of that data? Like the actual C sharp class, what, what did the library use? Uh, that, um, I don't understand why I would put that hint even on the wire. Like you're the C-sharp class that some library is going to unmarshal into. What? Make up a class. No, but I, I don't because I don't put runtime type information onto the wire when I send that to another system, which is maybe using a different language. Like, I'm trying to worry about the full stack system. That's implementation coupling that I, would never, that I would never do, so therefore I can't imagine that case. I'm trying to step into your court and try to expose that, like, yes, on the, that we have this thing that we call just bytes or any or something like that, but at the some layer in the stack, by the time it gets into one of, in Azure customer's hands, they're probably going to program using a programming language. I think that's a safe assumption. <laughs> so let's uh, work through their perspective and see what is best for them. Okay, so hold on, hold, hold, hold on just a second, Clemens. I think Vlad, Vlad we, you were trying to raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I tried to put what I should have put in data in uh, extensions because it wasn't clear to me that they were HTTP headers and uh, actually part of the envelope and not a message. And uh, I did that as part of an effort for a startup I was working with who wanted to uh, use cloud events for internal uh, uh, for internal functions too, like using cloud events to pass events from one function to another. Say, put a cloud event in SQS and another Lambda picks it up. And my issue for me was not uh, the FTP example, but with details regarding authentication. I wanted to put that into the extensions, and that was a bad idea. The effort was put on a pause due to some other architecture concerns, but the idea was to do to add uh, inside the data payload another metadata field and add relevant stuff there. So if uh, you, we have an event of uh, type file created, you, uh, you would have that as a top level property inside the payload and then a couple of extensions, say authentication or other events that happen. But I did not get that deep into it, though there is a PR where I was discussing this with Doug, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're running a little short on time here, but I think there are a couple of next steps on this one. First is, I don't think we're ready to accept this one yet. If nothing else, I think, Sarah, you wanted to make some, some editorial changes, so that hopefully will comment will come soon. Thomas, relative to your concerns, it wasn't clear to me whether you'd like to see those types of changes made as part of this PR, or is that a piece of follow-on work? Uh, I'm, 
I have enough battles I'm fighting, so I'm trying not to put my foot down too much on anything without caution. I'm just expressing that um, I I have run into issues in the past working on the full stack problem, where like it it was reasonable to say that maybe like you know like I said the, an FTP server would have an extension that's about the FTP objects as opposed to saying that just the routing framework is going to have thing about sampling. Um, but there it is sensible sometimes that the domain might want to put metadata about the domain in extensions as opposed and like these would be things that would never ever be ratified as as core common properties but that uh, in order to keep the type system uh, on the of the whole vertical stack simple for customers that might be a good place for it and so I was uh, it just it seems so weird that we're fighting so hard and how extensions should be done and then also looking at a PR that says, by the way, extensions are bad. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Since we're basically out of time, think about it. And if you'd like to see modifications to this PR or want another PR to address this, mm -hmm. add something someplace. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily extensions are bad, it's just don't put everything into extensions, which yeah. is a mistake I made. Yeah, that, that was my interpretation of it. Not extensions are bad, but teach their own. So with that, yeah. unfortunately, I think we need to call time because we are out of time. So let me just do a quick final roll call. Um, Anita Wu, are you still there? Anita? Yeah, hi. Hello, okay, thank you very much. Michael? Uh, Michael Payne, yes. Okay, thank you. Chris Borchers? Yep. All right, Doug, the other Doug. I'm not gonna try to pronounce your last name. Uh, what about Stanley? Uh, Jinjun? Oh, yep, sorry, I'm here. Which one is that, Stanley? Uh, Stan. Okay. Uh, Jinjun, you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank yes. you. And Scott Andrews? Scott? And what about Mark Fisher? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Scott, last chance. And what about Doug? All right, cool. Anybody else I missed from the agenda or for the roll call? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. And please do take, uh, when you get a chance, please do review the other two PRs for transports so we can resolve whether those meet the bar or not next week. And thank you guys very much. We'll talk next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.